Hi there, welcome or welcome back. My name is Emily and today we're going to be painting a couple of autumn still lives. A couple of pumpkins specifically. It's going to be super fun. We are also going to talk about why it is so important to fail in art and why it is important to not be afraid of failure. So today I wanted to do something low stakes, have some fun, just an exploration of shape, value, and color. So here I'm just sketching out a pumpkin with a Coleraise pencil on a gessoed canvas pad. This first study you'll see me working on canvas, but I do switch to Yupo later in the video. If you haven't seen my last video, I tried working with Yupo for the first time, which is basically plastic. It's a synthetic material that you can paint on and it's super strange, but I had so much fun I wanted to give it a go again. So the second study you will see me paint in this video is on Yupo. And actually that second study, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I think you should definitely stick around to watch that one. Though I do like how I handled this one as well. But I do think I could have simplified this one even further in terms of the shadow shapes, lighting, uh, everything. I could have been more bold with the brush strokes. I think I was a lot bolder in the second one and that's why I enjoy it a little bit more. So you can see me just blocking in the paint, starting with the shadows and then working into the midtones, and lastly going into the highlights. So I wanted to make this video and talk about the subject of failing in art because I have been thinking a lot about that lately and I think I just needed to get my thoughts out somewhere and I think it could maybe be helpful for someone who, you know, is in a sort of rut or is experiencing art block, whether you believe in art block or not. So I feel like I feel like a switch has flipped in me recently for the better, I think, artistically, I guess. Recently I found that I am able to let go and have a lot more fun in my work. And this has come from a lot of recent failures in my work. And I know this sounds crazy. You know how can a time of failure feel so positive and I think the reason for that is because I've sort of changed my mindset on failure. I once heard somebody say that you should fail forward and that really stuck with me. I don't remember who said it but that combination of words fail forward it just it makes so much sense in the context of making art. Basically every failure is a learning experience you probably know that, but it can feel like a step backwards when you are in the thick of it, when you've just royally messed up. It's kind of a reality check and you're like, hmm, maybe I'm not at the level I thought it was. And you can get down on yourself, but that is not productive. <laughs> I don't think it's a step backwards. I don't think a failure is a step backwards at all in most cases. When you fail, it's because you tried something, and in art, that is key to learning and growing. The important thing is not to stop painting or drawing when the failures happen. The important thing is to do another painting the next day, or do another drawing. Think about what you've learned, or where things went wrong, and use that knowledge. If you are failing, you are doing something right. You are learning through experience, which is so, so valuable in art. I would say it's the most valuable thing in art, is to learn and grow through the experience of actually doing. And if you are hard on yourself every time you fail, you won't get that growth because you will stop yourself from doing. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut, and I'm guilty of this as well, 
of painting or drawing the same things, not necessarily the exact same thing, but comfortable things. Because when we do well, we feel good. <laughs> and obviously we want to feel good. When we don't fail, we feel good about ourselves. But if you break out of that rut and instead be bold, challenge yourself and find some joy in the fails and the mess ups, I promise you, you will learn and you will get better. So I am currently auditing an amazing class by the legend Greg Manchez. If you don't know who that is, look him up, check him out. One thing I've learned from him is the idea of doing a painting, stepping back, and taking a moment to think about it, where you succeeded, where you maybe failed, and then just putting it aside and doing another one. And then stepping back, repeating everything I just said, and then putting it aside and doing another one. It can take a lot of time and a lot of frustrating nights, but that is how you will get better. And if you keep at it, you will see the growth. I think that's really encouraging for us as artists to want to keep going is looking back and seeing that growth. Don't get stuck on one thing that you messed up on and, you know, beat yourself up for it. Acknowledge it, try and learn from it, and then move on. And then maybe in the future you can look back at it and you'll know where you've improved and that can feel really good. Thank <laughs> so here I am getting my Yupo paper out. I really hope you can't hear my neighbor's dog barking, but yes, the Yupo paper, my new love. And I just discovered it on this channel in my last video. It is such a weird substrate to work on. The oil paint really slides around. You need a very soft brush and a light hand. But I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying how bold I can be. I know I've, I use the word, I throw the word bold around a lot, but I think that is something that is important to me in my art journey. So I started sketching it out and then going in with my burnt umber block in and quickly realized that I wanted to have a nice sort of toned surface. And in my last exploration with this, I learned that you can do a nice wash, wipe it off, and it will stain the Yupo if you give it a second to set. It's just a little bit nicer to work on something that's not bright, cold, white. So I did that and then I sketched back in with a cool erase pencil and then I went in with my burnt umber wash in. I think I also did some blue tones in there because this one was a very interesting reference with very interesting lighting. You will see that the shadow is blue <laughs> and usually I go for a warmer, a warmer more reddish shadow. This one was very blue. The lighting was so interesting. It's a cream off-white pumpkin and there's some really cool bright blue lighting here and it just created really cool colors on there. We got some greens, we got some orangey pinks, and we got some bluey teals. This one was a lot of fun and I don't know if I would have had the courage to go for it if I hadn't done the first study on the canvas. Yeah, this is me telling you guys if you are able to, if you like oil painting, maybe pick up some Yupo paper and give it a try. This is not sponsored, but it's a lot of fun. If you're an Alla Prima painter especially, you can get some really gorgeous, juicy brushwork. You'll also see me uh, a little bit later in the painting do some little scratched out marks and that's something that works really well on Yupo. Maybe some people won't like it, but I think 
it's really cute and really fun and especially for a little study like this like I talked about, you gotta, you gotta take risks to learn what you like and what you don't like. Maybe if it was a serious painting, I wouldn't have scratched out little sparkly stars. But it's not a serious painting for me, it's a little learning experience and those little scratched out little sparkly stars brought me some joy, so... I've been feeling pretty free with my work, especially in my sketchbook. There will be a sketchbook tour coming up in, I don't know, maybe a month. Definitely before the new year, if things go to plan. But there is a shift in this sketchbook, guys, where I go from, you know, being held back and being so focused on things looking good and being serious and not really exploring new mediums to throwing all of that out the window and using, like, a neon pink alcohol marker for the first time. <laughs> Yeah, I whipped out some alcohol markers for the first time since I was a kid and I've been having so much fun doing a lot of colored pencil and I'm just drawing things that I probably wouldn't have uh, at the start of the year. Just getting kind of goofy with it and loving, loving what's coming out of it. And I, I think I'm bringing that into my paintings as well. I can see it, at least. <laughs> I'm letting go. I really liked the play on complementary colors in this one. The purpley blues and the yellows. They're all very, I think, satisfying to look at. I tried super hard not to let things get too muddy, which can happen if you're working with complementary colors. When they mix, they're gonna make sort of a neutral color, which can be nice, but it can quickly turn into mud. Some people do really great paintings with sort of muddy colors, but I did want to keep some bright, fun, high chroma in this piece in particular. Yes, I was being very careful in those areas where the complementary colors met. I tried to put those strokes down and then leave them. that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. I want to know if you have experienced some art failure recently and I don't know if you think that you've learned something from it. I would love to know your thoughts on the topic. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching. If you like art videos, feel free to subscribe. It means a lot. I will see you next time. Bye.